everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Talk Tuesday. If this is your first time joining us, Tattoo Talk Tuesday is our weekly inter- If this is your first time joining us, Tattoo Talk Tuesday is our weekly interactive tattoo talk show where I take user submitted questions and I try to lend my experience if this is your first time joining us, Tattoo Talk Tuesday is our weekly interactive talk. Wow, I shot that intro like 11 times. So today I am going to be answering. Where's my phone? <laughs> it's the worst day of my life. Okay, Quicken, I was wondering if you have any experience or have an opinion on the Conjac sponges. If you're interested, I'd love to see a review on them. And I love your channel. Thank you so much for the work you've done. Yes, I. Today, we'll be talking about the Conjac sponge. Am I saying that right? So before I got that question, I didn't really have any experience with this, but yesterday, if you know, I was just tattooed in New York City, and that's why I am kind of top bunning it and sweatering it. And if you don't know, I am in the room of the house that has really good acoustics. It's raining outside today, so I thought for all you ASMR folks out there, I would film in here so maybe you guys can hear a little bit of the rain. I grabbed two of these, so I have this one here to talk about with you guys. Just looking at these sponges here, it kind of looks like something you would get like a loofah and it kind of feels like a loofah, it's really hard. It says 100% natural vegetable fiber tattoo sponge. So at first, you know, honestly, and it says for tattoo aftercare right on the bottom. Sorry about this nail, this nail polish won't come off. So, you know, on here right away, I'm like attracted to this because it says vegan, it says cruelty free. Already I'm like, okay, I'm listening, but why? Like, why do I need this? And I thought that this was kind of interesting, but like more on the kind of gimmicky side of like tattoo world. So at first I like wasn't super eager to use this. I was like, hey, I already have like an aftercare routine that like obviously works for me. So why would I want to change it in order to incorporate a product? You know, I feel like tattoo healing can be as natural or as involved as you want it to be. And I always say like, if you have a method that like clearly works for you, then to use it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be taking my own advice if I introduced this thing into my aftercare routine. However, love this show and this channel and Tattoo Talk Tuesday is actually celebrating its one year anniversary. Thumbs up for that. I thought, you know, hey, let's try this thing out. Stay tuned. I used this this morning to wash off my fresh tattoo and um, I'll kind of walk you through it. The first thing it says on here, all the directions, um, it says, first and foremost, always refer to your tattooist's guidelines on how to care for your new tattoo. The word tattooists, I don't know. Conjac sponge is nature's answer to general and effective cleansing. Suitable for the most sensitive of skins, what it is perfect for use with a new tattoo. I kind of thought this would be like a beauty blender kind of thing, but it's not. It's more like a loofah, if you were thinking that from the gate, because I was. Silky soft when it's wet, this pH balance and minimal mineral rich vegetable fiber sponge will gently cleanse and remove post tattoo gunk without irritating your skin or damaging your tattoo. The unique cellular structure of the sponge will help clean and soothe the tattoo area and reduce the likelihood of large scabs forming. So already I'm like, how? I don't want to like exfoliate the skin. It's brand new. And for me, my tattoo was done by a traveling tattoo artist. So, you know, I, it's not like a throwaway tattoo, like, ah, oh, the artist is down the street, I'll get a touch up if the sponge ruins it. So I was putting a ton of faith into this thing. So here's the directions and here's what I did. So it says, how to use. Immerse the sponge in fresh, clean water and fully hydrate the sponge prior to use. It will become very soft and supple. Use the sponge in a gentle circular motion, applying very light pressure. Never scrub or use before the sponge is fully hydrated. No soups, no soaps are needed. 
So I like had a lot of nervousness and like unfamiliarity with this, this sponge. I like referred to the instructions like 11 times before I used it. And honestly, the instructions should be like, get it wet, wring it out and use it. But you know, they're lightly worded to make you feel comfortable. But that actually made me more uncomfortable because I was like, why does this have directions? Um, you can kind of see in this footage, I refer to the, the directions a lot. Good thing this is in like a little plastic package because I definitely got it wet. Um, the instructions wet while I was using it. But what I immediately liked about the sponge is it, it, it was soft and it wasn't coarse like a loofah would be once you got it wet. Once you got it wet, it had weight in the hand, but it was like a very light, very open texture. As you can see here, this isn't the first time I had washed the tattoo. Because I do get tattooed in New York City, I had traveled for about two and a half hours. So I was ready to wash it once I got home and then I rewrapped it myself and then fell asleep. So this is all the day after, but still the first night, like the first day I wash my tattoos, they're always like, the most like saturated in, as this says, tattoo gunk, plasma, whatever. So I think that when I am washing like this tattoo gunk off, I usually use Dr. Bronner's soap until everything is clean and it feels clean to the touch. It's not slimy. What I noticed with this sponge is I did not need to use any soap. And I thought that that was kind of nice because when I'm using the Dr. Bronner's soap, uh, I've heard other people complain like in the comments and stuff that the soap is too strong and that the soap like leaves it tingling and that you shouldn't use peppermint on your body. And peppermint is really drying. So if you don't like dilute your Dr. Bronner's with to the right consistency that works for you, which I can only recommend through trial and error, it might be too strong for you. I remember after Dana got her tattoo, we went to Lush to pick up some lotions and stuff for her. And the girl who checked us out was like, never use Dr. Bronner soap on your tattoos. So there are people all over the spectrum who feel one way or the other about using soaps. So if you're someone who doesn't want to use soap and doesn't want to take that advice from me or has a hard time finding the right dilution to your soap, the right consistency, or just like, doesn't use it, can't find it, it's not available to you. This was really cool because right away I felt the sponge working and it did remove that like slimy layer a lot quicker than using Dr. Bronner's soap, which before I used this was my number one method. So when I pulled the sponge away, I did notice that it did absorb the like, residue that was coming off of my tattoo. And I thought that was really interesting to be able to like actually view it and see it on there because that is reassuring that your tattoo did like excrete some of that extra stuff in the night. Usually I will see that in like the way I wrap my tattoos the second night, I'll kind of see some of that extra ink and plasma pushed out in the paper towel. And then I'm like, oh good, it worked. So seeing it actually on the sponge was relieving and like gratifying. Um, and it's really just like almost a piece of styrofoam. Like that's how it feels. That's how it has this like creepy little string. And that's like, it kind of reacts like a piece of styrofoam. I actually would recommend this. I actually really liked it. And I think there like aren't a lot of like tattoo products on the market that like me, I don't, me personally as a tattoo collector, I'm really comfortable with. Like, I think there are like gimmicky things out there. And I think it's not fair to people who are getting like their first or second tattoo to see this stuff sometimes. And they're like, oh, I need that. I need to put salt water in my tattoo. That'll work. I definitely feel bad. And usually with my own experience, I stray from tattoo products. And that's just something I've always done. So I was really hesitant to try this, but um, 
you know, once I looked it up and looked into it, it seemed cool. I, I was like really blindsided by like all the little vegan stuff on there. I was like, oh me. Actually, I, I actually really liked it. I think it was easy to use. And I think right away it made my tattoo smooth and took off that top layer of like residue and stuff. And it says that the sponge will last for three months as long as you um, hang it up to dry and you don't like leave it in your shower. I thought that this was nice. It says it helps prevent large scabbing. I think, you know, if you've had one or two tattoos before, you kind of understand how your body works so you can control scabbing. Like I haven't had a tattoo that's ever really scabbed up before. So I'm not super sure if this prevents that, but this could be a nice like really easy transition if you're getting your first tattoo and you're really nervous and you're like, I don't want anything to go wrong. I think this is a really nice guarantee that you'll be in the mindset to take care of your tattoo and you'll have a physical product that will lend itself to helping you heal. I think that that is super cool about this. And honestly, for me, like grandpa, like has all the tattoos, like you couldn't show me something new, like I'm, I'm beyond it. I think this this got through to me and I actually did enjoy using it. And I think the next tattoo I get, I will use one of these too. I think definitely for like um, the first night when the tattoo is like really saturated with like Vaseline and ink and blood and plasma, especially for me traveling from New York back to Philly, I just feel like dirty, and it's gross and the first thing I want to do is jump in the shower. I think this would be really nice to have like a little private thing exclusively for cleaning my tattoo. That way it is sanitary and clean, no soap needed. That's how I feel. Let me know how you feel in the comments down below. I'll leave this website linked in the description if you wanted to check it out. Thanks for asking me. I love your questions. You can always submit questions to me. I'm sorry if you asked me this question like four months ago, but this was the first tattoo that I could like actually like look and clean and show for you guys. Cause like if I would have did it to my back tattoo, it would have been a nip slip and I don't even know how to get back there. So thanks for your patience. Um, thank you guys for all the well wishes on my new tattoo. I'm super stoked on it. I love it. Follow Jessie Preston if you haven't already. She is a pleasure. I, I love her to death. I really do. She's such a positive influence. Just follow her even for that. So next week, I want to have an episode all about how to make an appointment with traveling tattoo artists. I get a lot of questions about that. And even though I feel like I put out information on like how to make a tattoo appointment and how to find your perfect artist, this is a question I get a lot. So if you want to ask me anything else about that kind of situation, like how to get tattooed by a traveling artist, leave your comments down below and that will be next week's question. Surprise, surprise. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Give this video a thumbs up and happy one year anniversary for Tattoo Talk Tuesday. I'm so excited. You guys make this channel happen. I love you. Bye.